I'm the Angry Librarian and today I'm going to be looking at the book The Table of Less Valued Knights which is written by Marie Phillips. Now this book shows us that King Arthur, famous for his Knights of the Round Table, had another table, the one where the disgraced, the infirm, the elderly and even crazy knights sit and this is where we find this book's hero, Sir Humphrey. Now unlike Knights of the Round Table, less valued knights are actually forbidden to accept quests, but one night when damsel in distress Elaine turns up seeking help from Camelot, Sir Humphrey, being the only knight she sees, takes on the quest for her. And this results in Sir Humphrey going on a fantastical journey involving kings, queens, the Kama Sutra and some confusing emotions. Now I both loved and hated this book. I hated this book because no matter what journey Sir Humphrey went on, the journey itself was always thrilling, always full of excitement and adventure and intrigue. See, I imagine even him just popping to the local shops for a pint of milk would involve him having to solve a riddle from the lady in the lake. Sir Humphrey's adventures make me hate how dull my life has become. I mean, the only excitement I get out of a walk to town is if I happen to be behind someone who's got a really nice arse, which is bloody rare, to be honest. So that's why I hate this book, but I also said that I love it, and it's true. My hatred of Sir Humphrey's journeys is so strong, so intense, that it's forced me to decide, well, you know, why don't I just spice up my own adventures? I mean, at the minute, when I go outside my house and I walk to town or I walk to work, it's so boring. It's just up and down the same streets, up and down, up and down, up and... Can I keep going on? Because that's how boring it is. I mean, yesterday, I crossed over the other side of the road just that I could walk on that side of the pavement, see if it offered up anything new and exciting. Maybe there'd be some new cracks in the pavement for me to avoid stepping on. New scatterings of dog crap for me to evade. Previously unseen drainage gratings. Piles of leaves I've not encountered before. You know, things like that. And did it help? Did my usually boring war become something more exciting? Of course it fucking didn't! The grass may be greener on the other side, but the pavement's just as cracked and uneven. For God's sake, what was I thinking? So, as I was saying, so intense is my envy of Sir Humphrey, which, let's face it, is a made yuppie fictional character. That's right, I envy a fictitious, disgraced knight. And so strong is that envy that I decided to take matters into my own hands. I decided that I'm going to force adventure into my journeys. But how? By hiring ninjas to strike me from the shadows of bus stops? Perhaps by creating a paper mache dragon, fitting it with a flamethrower and asking a friend to attack me with it at a random point along the way. By hiring my minions, all good librarians have them by the way, to scream at me, lining the roads everywhere I go, cheering me on, wanting nothing more than me to take on their quest, fainting at the sight of me. Well, not quite that, but by using my imagination. You know, maybe the next time I pop to the shops for some milk, I'll have to solve a riddle from the lady in the lake. Hang on a minute, I live in Essex, so it's probably going to be more like I'll have to pass a test from the tart at the tills. Yeah, that's it. But hey, it's a start! You know, instead of just going to work with my pat lunch and my glasses, I'll be taking battle rations and a sword. I'll be daring, charging into the fray, doing battle with the evil ogres that dare stand in my way. Actually, the whole ogre thing wouldn't be that hard to imagine, considering the state of some of the people I serve on a daily basis. And whenever I serve one of these ogres, instead of stamping and returning it in their books, I'll stamp their soul straight to hell. Abandon all hope you enter into my library, refusing to pay your 10p fines. I, Lord Craigus, warrior of England, shall make you pay with your life. I'm really getting into this. And just because the knights in this book started off this whole idea, it doesn't mean that everything has to be Camelot and knight related. I mean, there are dozens of heroes and role models out there that you can take inspiration from. Take Robin Hood, for example. Robbing from the rich, giving to the poor. I mean, think about using him the next time you go to the supermarket. I know I am. Look out! Here I come! Robbing from Waitrose, giving to Lidl. Hmm, who else is there you could take inspiration from? What about Mulder and Scully? I mean, they never have a dull day. Aliens here, monsters there, government conspiracies everywhere! On second thoughts, so I don't actually need the X-Files for that bit. I mean, the other week we had several families come into the library claiming that they'd been told we were closing down on a permanent basis. And this was news to all the hard-working, busy bee librarians in there, I can tell you. One of the local schools had even gone to the lengths of telling their entire school assembly that we were closing and they should all bring their books back immediately. Every other day you've got headlines claiming that the government are making more and more cuts to local council budgeting. You've got less and less new books appearing on your local library shelves. And I'm sure the biscuits in the staff room are slowly being replaced by an inferior brand. Don't talk to me about conspiracies! How did I get onto conspiracies? What was I supposed to be talking about? 
Ah yeah, journeys. But what if your imagination isn't up to the task of creating a whole new reality every time you feel like having a jaunt outside your front door? I mean, are you doomed to live a beige-tinted existence for the rest of your life? Of course not. Your imagination can't fix all the problems in your life. You know, sometimes you've got to get practical. I mean, let's start with the basics. Do you walk everywhere you go? Yes? Why? Change it up. Go rollerblading, go skateboarding, go zorbing down the country lane, hang gliding to the town centre. Are you tired of riding that same old knackered horse to the office every day? Won't make a difference. Save a horse and ride a cowboy. Though always make sure to get his permission first. Cowboy's not your thing? Well, let's go back to the book and do what Sir Humphrey Squire Comrade did. Trading your horse for an elephant. Mind you, the fines for not picking up after your dog crapping are pretty high, so I'd imagine not picking up after your elephant are going to be pretty astronomical. But wouldn't it be worth it? And if you don't drive, there's no reason why being a passenger has to be so tedious. The next time you're passing through an unfamiliar town and you see a good-looking guy or gal walking past, blow them a kiss, give them a wink. I mean, you're never going to see them again, so why don't you just live a little? With all that said, let me leave you with this. Make every trip you go on to into an adventure. Turn every little jaunt you go on to into a quest, an expedition, a voyage of the damn well interesting. It's all up to you. It's in your hands. Only you have the power to turn the mundane into the enthralling, the exciting, the unbelievable world of not being boring. And now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to go to the toilet. No, hang on a minute. I can't say that, can I? That's too boring. Come on, think quick, think. There must be a way of relating it to the book that I can make that more exciting. Oh, come on, come on, come on, what's in the book? Well, you've got Camelot, which, you know, could be easily turned into Camelot, but that's not really for going to the toilet, that's for something completely different. Now, come on, stay on topic, it's got to be something for toilets. Come on, what other things can you call them? You've got Lou, you've got Bog, that could work. Bog, could do something about a Bog. Oh, uh, come on, it has to be something to do with the book. Aha! King Arthur, he sits on the throne, and throne is another word for toilet. I've got it! Right, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to go claim back my throne from the evil-doing fiend who dwells within the malodorous bog. To adventure!